please. You'll notice you have a lot of options. Also, you get to pick your spheres of magic. This guy is on the row right now. <clears throat> uh, let's read this. Damn, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if Avatar Aang or Twiddletoe would speak like that? Alright, I was extremely excited with this one because I originally thought, by seeing completely wrongly, that this was going to be the third entry in the game, Age of Wonders 3. Because that one I've played because it was gifted to me alongside that other one, Planetfall, that turned into a triple X game. What? <laughs> triple X game? 4X game? Oh my god, I saw a. <laughs> I saw just a picture of Vin Diesel coursing to my head. Our family. But Age of Wonders 1 is a game that I remember being in our local library. To type that you could borrow and go at home and play when your parents didn't want to buy you any console games because games rot your brain which the older i grow the more i get those boomer takes but obviously no they are hell of fun but we have here a review from seth on age of wonders one and apparently it's the vga edition 800 by 6 Okay. okay. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a game that's very dear to me, and also oh. about as old as some of the audience. Age of Wonders, released 1999 by Triumph Studios, the same guys who made Overlord, is a turn-based fantasy strategy game, which still holds up today because it's completely insane. Also, I apologize, but oh. it appears uh, my graphics have glitched. Does uh, anyone know how to fix this? It's uh, actually meant to look like this, uh, but let's make the most of it. I remember having a similar glitch when I played uh, the original Chaos Gate game. Um, or at least, at least I wanted to try it before playing Demon Hunters, and which actually is getting a DLC soon, so uh, upcoming content. <clears throat> but yeah, I got that uh, pink screen of death. True GOG. Age of Wonders is a game where forced immigration, slavery, and wide-scale racial genocide can be patched up and smoothed over in a few turns, where oh. you can flood the entire map by casting the appropriately flood. named spell, which is called Flood, drowning yeah. anyone who can't swim, where one wizard can spot another wizard, summon a 2x2 hex of mountains, and trap them inside forever, where instead of actually playing, I channel several death storms in a row, and instead of actually fighting the enemy leader, I can nuke them and the entire landscape from a Bomb safe goblins. distance, where due to strained diplomatic relations with the halflings, one of my leprechauns went rogue. As leprechauns are invisible, the only way I have of detecting him is watching my buildings explode. This is a game where the phrase, recruit the hose, is an entirely valid and effective strategy. The nymphs. The nymphs. Enough said. Goobas. Now, I only got to see this from a 2014 game, okay? <clears throat> but think about that like it is in no way weird that a lot of guys have like weird expectation about women and or and or the female body also i'm not sure if i have to censor this because i don't know exactly what i'm looking at Look, could it be a nipple maybe but where exactly do we draw the line for what's erogenous obscene or otherwise imagine for example you're under police interrogation and they right. show you a four pixel image and ask you what do you think about that huh and naturally you respond with uh I, I guess uh, I guess no, it's all no, right. No, no, oh, yeah. no. Well, they zoom out the image, and it's a still no. frame picture of one man naked, about to descend his entire weight upon an empty glass jar. Jesus. Skip, Star, you're skip. A real this man did not just do that. This was along with so many of those um, images slash footage that will be pranked, sent to people. Which was kind of fucking weird, and I am still friend with the person. Like, we met after, like, a reunion for an Halloween party uh, last month. A guy and a girl from our class used to be, like, the biggest trolls. Where, on several occasions, they showcased both lick spin, one man, one jar, and two girl, one cup. You nasty. On school projectors. How in the glorious fuck the teachers just clicked on links. That was sent to them anonymously is beyond me you're a real sick puppy you know that and 
Just like that, you become a deviant to society. You're locked up forever <laughs> in Fat Kelly. Jail. Most don't even last the winter before getting vored by Pyro. Anyway, I forgot the point I was trying to make. Let's proceed. Okay. Age of Wonders is fascinating because despite being turn-based, it is a game that stresses me greatly. That's because it can be played in one of two modes, turn-based or simultaneous. Simultaneous turns is objectively so the weird. best and most hilarious way to play the game because it completely destroys the sequence of turns, lets everyone make a move, at the same time and leaves you to figure out how the hell that even works. You could play a number of pre-made maps and download even more online, but primarily we learn to play by playing the story campaign. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, story. In Age of Wonders, once upon a time, everyone lived in general harmony under <laughs> the, the elves. Elvish court, ruled by King Inioch. Then the humans <laughs> came and slaughtered Inioch and his entire court. Race war! led the elves to some very interesting political places, as uh, you may consider this the Twin Watchtowers event of Elvish history. With one group, the Keepers, maintaining that the humans are relatively young and stupid, that we shouldn't hold a grudge over it, and instead seek greater understanding despite this early atrocity. The Cult of Storms, however, can be accurately summarized as Race War Now, Kill Every Human That Ever Lived. These are probably the Damn. same edgelords sitting on Elvish discords, making a little Dark Age edits all day. <laughs> the only numbers they know are human on elf crime statistics, and their favorite topic of conversation conversation is uh, how much better life was before <laughs> the elven echo chamber yeah or they came to the valley of wonders it's funny that these things don't they haven't really evolved since the uh since the first iterations because you've made kind of not absolutely but similar things in the age of wonders tree these elves are beyond basement dwellers they straight up live underground, completely relatable. I know that if I was ever invaded, I would tunnel deep into the Earth's crust and live inside my goon cave for the next hundred years. And that leads us to your pivotal choice. Serve the equivalent of the Elvish United Nations or team up with a bunch of psychopaths that are just as likely to kill you as they are any human. Daddy Meandor is going to make Elf Hyperborea real and you don't want to miss it. <laughs> Regardless of what you choose, you get to make a custom leader with a selection of skills and abilities. You'll notice yeah, that does kind of look like Joe Rogan, like 25-year-old Joe Rogan before he got the liver king gut. You'll notice you have a lot of options. Also, you get to pick your spheres of magic. This guy is on the row right now. <clears throat> uh, let's read this. Damn, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Reimagine if Alatar Ang or Twiddletoe would speak like that. God damn, the mommy milkers on her. Rule 34 artist. <clears throat> damn, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> the ancient technique of cock bending is my only hope. I mean, to be fair, it is one of these series that is just prone to these kind of things. Think about this. Uh, I remember season three, uh, I, I don't know, one of the earlier episodes. Yeah, that's where Katara, uh, uh, or Sugar Queen, encounters uh, this elderly lady who inadvertently ends up teaching her how to blood bend. Imagine the possibilities, because it's quite surprising that Eng and Katara only got three children. Let's move on. You pick three at the start, but eventually a total of seven from the following elements. Fire, water, <laughs> air, earth, life and death. Choosing one blocks <laughs> tunak, you tunak. from selecting the opposite, so you really have to make your choices count. However, you have absolutely no idea what those choices are, so uh, just pick whatever. Everything is good. Ultimately, no matter what you're playing and who you're playing against, the objective is always the same. It's a grand scale game of VIP. Your leader is very powerful, but not invincible. And the same goes for your enemies. Your goal is not to win the map. It's to run up on a thug and return his body to the streets. In combat, you can make a beeline for the leader, uh, shank him, and that ends the entire fight. Everyone reverts to neutral as his entire faction ceases to exist. This creates a constant sense of high tension because your leader is the most tactical unit on the board. Basically, wow. the game incentivizes you to put your leader's neck on the line at all times. The closer you are to getting assassinated, the more likely you are to win. Because the Are you telling me that playing as a wizard turns you into a Super Saiyan Gandalf? Like, that's literally how they operate, right? The closer they come to death, the stronger they become. The more fights you survive, the more experience you acquire, and the more skill points you have to spend on becoming theoretically invincible. I've run campaigns where my leader can slaughter entire armies, nuke entire armies, or forcibly mind control on entire his armies. 
completely on his own. But that takes time. Before that, you'll have to rely on your troops. This game comes with 12 different races. They interact Let's go. diplomatically with each other, with you and the rest of the map, and you can freely influence that in any direction. For example, playing Cult of Storms on the United Cities map, I'm supposed to occupy the halfling capital. But right. instead of fighting, I sneak up on my orc ally, declare war, and brutally murder him on the same turn. And just like that, my Skulls. diplomatic standing with the halfling skyrockets. So I take their cities without lifting a finger. They're so happy with me getting rid of an enemy, they'll quietly brush aside the fact that they are now actively involved in scorched earth tactics against their former allies. It's been so long since I've watched the movies that I've completely forgotten how babyface they used to look. Aside the fact that they are now actively involved in scorched earth tactics against their former allies. This game taught me that any amount of xenophobia and racial hatred can be overcome by uh, building walls. I, uh, I guess it makes sense. They don't have to see me and uh, I don't have to see them. Sometimes you capture cities with races that don't like you. And if you hold on to them, they're going to rebel. That's fine because we can evict them. Look, you're free to hold a negative opinion. Mm -hmm. Just uh, please do it in the woods. Whatever race you choose to resettle is going to dislike this move, but uh, whichever race you choose to move in is going to like you even more. And basically, the people who are moving out already hate my guts, so uh, you're not losing anything. It's free real estate. Conversely, to illustrate the importance of diplomacy, I, I was about to say, like, what is he showing right there? So he proceeds to show a picture of Reagan and the Taliban. Well, to clarify, this is not the Taliban. These were like, um, what are they called? Afghan freedom fighters, which of course by by tradition uh, were then armed by Reagan and his administration and later on upcoming uh, leaders to fight against the Soviets. But this used to be a picture that was used to depict like uh, unison with uh, the enemy and stuff like to parody or make fun of Reagan, which I mean. I'll make fun of Reagan all day, but this was just a, a false fact. You can click on this little button three times and, and I'll lose the game. Yes, at the click of a button, you can explode any structure you own, including cities filled with women and children. Naturally, oh. raising a city to the ground is a universally unpopular move. Turn enough towns into mass graves and uh, all your troops will disband and leave you. It's important to understand that each race isn't following you specifically. But They're just serving their mutual interest. And when that mm. disappears, so does their loyalty. That doesn't mean war crimes are bad. It just means you should do it to someone else fuck it keeps going it keeps on going listen there uh i okay i'm gonna try and and not stop too much but yugoslavia is like one of the best examples that he could have used here that is fucking based but i have a video where i talked about that in the history of world war ii in by reaction of oversimplified so if you want to check that out uh get knowledgeable through that but damn that's why i love his humor because it's subtle and if you know you know timer structure explodes it spawns neutral units if you mouse over them you can see their behavior if it says raiding oh boy that entire region is about to become a whole lot more interesting. You see, raiders also burn shit down, in turn spawning more raiders, creating a feedback loop of wartime atrocity. Raising structures to the ground is not only incredibly fun, it's also a one-way process to accidentally wiping out the entire map. You can rebuild structures using a builder's guild, but uh, guess what? Those are this destroyed can also too. be raised to the ground, meaning Yikes. there's no way back. So yes, technically this is still a fantasy game, but if you want a more fitting title, it's uh, Harry Potter and the Yugoslavic War Tribunal. Now, uh, I've been thinking of branching out into the financial sector and uh, opening up a sperm bank, but to do that, I need a lot of money, no. advertiser money. Hey, let me tell you something. Me and my friends, we Today like to get sponsor. very drunk and go on little tangents exploring the web. Well, after one night of this, I woke up to find my Amazon. Rob, I am praying to Baphomet. Recommending me a statue of Baphomet, some effigy sticks to burn as offerings, and uh, am I allowed to say this? Crack. A crack pipe. Everything you need to do a little magic. Now, that's pretty funny. Uh, until I realized, wait a minute, I'm getting recommendations for something I browsed on a completely different account on a completely different computer, which means they already tracked, logged, and sold my data, and uh, they know who I am. You might say, who cares? They'll market to me, so what? So 
Oh, I repeat something that an editing AI by the name of Max O once said. <clears throat> Here's a little fun fact that Genshin players don't know. The age of consent is 18. To me, so what? So, your data is going to be resold to data brokers and anyone can buy it, including the government. <laughs> or should I say, bought, because Homeland Security and the IRS already have. The precise live geolocation of one in four Americans watching this is already in the hands of people who surely have your best interests in mind. Hey, have you ever been audited by the tax man? Let me tell you, it's a lot of fun, because the first thing they did is freeze my account. If not for friends and family, I could not buy food or pay the rent. And uh, you know what they needed to do all of this? Uh, suspicion. Do not give these people an inch because they'll take your leg off. No one should have a right to record or track your actions online. In fact, they don't. That's the <laughs> whole reason they use data brokers. Surveillance without a warrant is a breach of a Fourth Amendment. But uh, we didn't do it. We just contract someone to do it for us. I, I also really do appreciate the fact that he is trolling uh, Getty Images, like many people out there are already doing. Like, uh, yeah, so you think that that's a silly watermark? He's going to stop me. I care for my privacy, but clearly the feds don't take no for an answer, which is why I use ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN sure. reroutes my internet connection through a secure encrypted server, so it's much more difficult for data brokers to identify or log my activities online. ExpressVPN has a no logs policy by the fact that their VPN servers run off RAM, meaning oh. that even if you wanted to, no information is actually stored. But if you're not fully convinced, I actually have the best best endorsement possible. One of my friends works in police investigation. He uh, told me himself he knows ExpressVPN is legit <laughs> because he has repeatedly sent them a court order information request That's to which they must nails. legally comply. Each time they showed their records and unfortunately for them, <laughs> but fortunately for you, each time they showed nothing. So stop letting anyone and everyone track, monitor, and log everything you do online. Because <laughs> whatever unspeakable things you do, that's between you and your god and no one else. Well, at least now we know that he's a uh, fate fan. <clears throat> and if you'd like to keep it that way, get ExpressVPN today. It's incredibly easy to use. All you gotta do is download the app, tap a single button, and uh, just like that, you're a ghost in the machine. And ExpressVPN does all this without slowing my connection. Sign up now and you get free months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash Seth or clicking the link in the description box below. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Aside from diplomacy, the likelihood of units working together is dependent on their alignment. This can be anything from good. Your life is everything. You serve all oh. purpose. You should, you should treat, treat yourself, yourself now. now. To neutral. Your life literally is as valuable is as, valuable as, as a, a summer ant. <laughs> Dude, I've listened to this guy way too often. <laughs> oh, we need the redemption arc of uh, low tier God. We need to turn him into a higher echelon human. Your life is everything. You serve all purpose. You should treat yourself now. Pure evil. What I need you to do is I need you to take a nearest rope that you He's got, out of line wrap here. Wrap it around if you got a garage or a, or a, or a piece fucking music. stairway and hang yourself. Period. Why are you alive? Do the world a favor and hang yourself. I don't know, but I think this depends on the alignment of your leader's race and how well <laughs> that meshes with that specific creature. If I'm sorry, I don't know why that one is the thing that got me so hard. Oh my god. <laughs> it went from... He did not laugh to... He laughed. If you're a neutral race, you might be able to pull both sides of the spectrum. But the more polarized you are to one direction, the less likely it is that you'll convince and work with someone from the opposite end of a spectrum. Every race is structured by four common tech levels. Level 1 is your basic melee and ranged unit. Level 2 gives you siege weapons, clerics, and cavalry. Level 3 gives you specialist units. And level 4 gives you your ultimate unit. The maximum tech level depends on the size of a city. And basically, if you want dragons, you need a four tile city. Now, I'm gonna cover every race one by one because I can. Most maps come in layers. Overland, caverns, and sometimes even deep caverns. Goblins pretty much own the underground because not only do they move fast and see well, they have giant beetles that can eat terrain. There's no front line against goblins because they'll just tunnel around you. Also, they have my favorite unit. Here's a montage 
you explain what they do? Goblin Bombers. RIP headphone users. Goblin Bombers, uh, believe it or not, explode, taking about half a screen with them. Conversely, dwarves live underground, but also they're the only race that can cross mountains. The ah. borders made by natural geography just jump over it. Because dwarves can just hop over. They have access to the best yeah. tier free unit in the game. The Giant, which, on its own, can win you the entire campaign. Orcs have the best melee fighters in the game, and they get a dragon. The Elves counter that by mass-producing megafaults. This is not a joke. A nymph can seduce a tier-free Orc Warlord and keep him in her cohort of simps for the rest of the game. It only works on mail. And this is where I have to point out one thing. Within gaming, since the dawn of ages, Literally three things have been established, okay? One is the objectification of women. <laughs> it's literally a thing, okay? There's nothing political here, it's just true. Two is the affirmation of male stereotype. Third is the uh, confirmation of what your sexual biases are. Because, let, let's just say this. I remember going to the arcades with friends. And we will play games like Street Fighter, Tekken, King of Fighters. Uh, what was that other one there? Uh, Breakers? I think that's what it's called. We used to have those. And, now I'm not going to say that I have the best guitar ever. But you could tell apart those who were constantly playing as Ken and Ryu and or Yuri Yagami. And those of us who play the likes of uh, Thunder Tide Mummy, uh, Chun-Li, or Street Mart Mary, or uh, Beast absolute beast thriller i think that's about that time that i knew that i was into muscular women <laughs> but like video games kept on affirming the things that you like when i was younger the artwork and sprite of a nymph stirred feelings inside me it made me act up as they say like a quirked up white boy busting it down sexually no but in all seriousness from the tender age of nine and seeing the various booba in this game namely the nymph the spider queen the nature elemental and the mermaid i knew that being gay is going to be an uphill battle battle uh, 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 task <laughs> impossible day i'm still losing dark elves are just edge nice. elves except their version of a nymph is gonna step on your balls they have a most fucked up tier four unit in the game the incarnate oh it nicely kills you and wears your skin until keeps on killed, going at which point it jumps out to possess someone else yeah this shit gave me nightmares as a child lizard men are just as comfortable in water as they are on land they get turtle artillery and a basilisk they their mortal enemy is the Frostlings, which uh, freeze everything they touch. They don't need to swim because <laughs> Frost Queens can just turn water into ice. They have dire penguins and uh, aggressive LED lights. If you see a horde of Frostlings marching Throw across fire the ocean at them. towards you, the appropriate response is to cast Firestorm and melt the ice underneath them as they yeah. all drown to death. I love this game. Humans are uh, humans. Oh. As vanilla as they sound, they're actually really strong. They have gunpowder, knights, and the oldest human tradition of all scamming the absolute shit out of you their ultimate unit is a skyship transport which leaves the entire map open to a uh, wide-scale human enrichment azrix are desert humans they're exactly the same except they also have beholders genies sandworms from dune and an avatar of vishnu that can mind break entire armies so besides absolutely everything <laughs> They're pretty much the same. Halflings exist to be picked up and tossed down a deep well. Undead are immune or resistant to most forms of damage and can regenerate hatred. a single turn. They also have access yeah, to oh, race, necromancers one of free units oh, in the race. entire game yeah. with physical immunity. If you think that sounds a little busted, that's because it is. Unless he gets smacked by a priest or exercised, that wraith is going to decimate the whole map. Oh, and they also have a Grim Reaper. He can insta-kill you on touch. But really, the worst thing about him is that he's going to ruin all your crops. The <laughs> manifestation of death is outside our door, and uh, he's fucking up our corn. The Hymen, or as they're <laughs> known in the German copy, the Ubermensch, exist to destroy the forces of darkness. Yeah, try saying it that fast. Appropriately, every second unit in their lineup can either turn the undead or deal holy damage. I don't have much to say about them, except uh, seeing a titan get jumped by a full stack only to kill them on the same turn is some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Now, let's talk about magic. I recently found that uh, air magic is busted. At shipyards, you can make ships, the largest of which, the galleon, is stronger than any ultimate unit in the game. Now, normally, but that's it's all right, because they're bound to the sea. So, yeah. 
enchant them to fly instead. And I cast Air Mastery, which doubles the speed of anything that sails or flies in the air. My Why don't we have something like this in Total Warhammer 3? I know that Clan Cafe have those balloon things, but like, this is something that the Empire should have. It's straight up out there. Emperor, get working. Summon your mages. We need to have <laughs> like a Jaina Proudmoore moment for those who played World of Warcraft when she gets hold of her father's ship and she just rolls in and starts busting it down sexual style. <laughs> I love that sentence. My newly created battle cruisers do both and can now sweep the entire map in a matter of turns. Now, they are vulnerable to one thing, uh, being killed, which is why I take free spheres in water and cast liquid form. The AI doesn't know how to dispel magic, so uh, yeah, the game is pretty much over. The other spheres get similar bullshit. Uh, water is just a matter of waiting for everyone to drown. Fire can turn the map into downtown Detroit, and uh, life can invoke the power of live, laugh, love uh, to make foreign occupation seem like a pleasant experience. Oh. Death, on the other hand, lets you cast Pestilence, which, uh, because of how they're programmed, breaks the computer AI. Uh, instead of stepping out of a Pestilence uh, cloud just and potentially move. taking less damage, uh, the enemy will conclude that the most logical move to make is uh, none at all, and will sit inside the Brab cloud until they asphyxiate. And uh, Earth Magic is basically just uh, talk shit, get buried alive. <laughs> it's actually really soothing to admire the enemy leader safely inside his downy containment chamber. As you have no doubt guessed or gleaned from this video, there's many ways to break this game, and uh, I only know some of them. My recent favorite is starting with Lightning Strike, which uh, makes fights increasingly stupid as you watch multiple enemies run up to your leader, uh, take a swing, miss, and get stun locked into oblivion. Also, I learned that uh, unlike seduce or charm, which uh, only work if a target has testicles, dominate actually works on anything. And uh, if you get lucky and roll a ring of flight, this includes dragons as well. Oh, uh, by damn. The way, I don't know what to think of this, but uh, I learned how this works mechanically. I found out that men in this game are categorized as a uh, humanoid, whereas oh, no. women fall under the category of creature. <laughs> Regardless. Okay, okay, it's not like that. Which yeah. side you follow, the campaign is pretty long. There's branching paths, a lot of lore, and generally is just a fun experience. Uh, spoilers ahead, so if you don't want spoilers to a 23-year-old game, uh, skip forward to this yeah. timestamp. All right, actually, I don't have any spoilers. The two endings. Just wanted those people gone so we can have a quiet moment. Anyway, give it a few seconds so they think I'm actually saying something valuable. Anyway, remember Elf Hyperborea? Yeah, that kind of went wrong. Meandor yep. tries to revive King Ineoch, and uh, it works uh, a little too well. <laughs> the star shining over the Valley of Wonders is blood red. Ineoch is now an undead lich, leading the forces of death. Positives, destruction of humanity. Negatives, he's going to kill us all in the process. Everybody. All in all, a mixed bag. So uh, we should probably do something about it. At some point, you can escape with your people to safety or choose to stand and fight with the arrival of a hymen, whose name sounds very strange if you say it too quickly. I if you're playing the cult, your options are like, um, I could join the undead, but they're probably, maybe, definitely going to kill me. Yeah, I'm going team hymen. Then you win the campaign and it's like, maybe the real cult of storms was all the friends we made along the way. Wow. <laughs> I'm a wanted war criminal. If you play keepers and choose to stay, you and the hymen essentially put Ineoch back in the ground. Your reward yeah, for the better is a time of loneliness as the last of your race has sailed across the sea, never to be seen again. It's a bittersweet ending, and I like it very much. You know the fable of a fox and the sour grapes? Uh, yeah, I want to eat them because they're sour. To this day, <laughs> the game looks amazing. I'm running it 800 by 600, stretched to a 1080p model. Monitor. The possibility that this knowledge is making someone very upset right now makes it all the more enjoyable. The sprite work, beautiful. Animated dragon that follows your cursor in the UI, wow. beautiful. I love this game. What more can I say? The soundtrack is so good, I've listened to it at least a hundred times back to back for the last two decades. And the sound effects. The sound effects are completely scuffed. Full disclosure, <laughs> I think they used royalty-free uh, stock sound effects for most of a combat, and uh, I love it. I Look, I don't need to explain why Beholder sounds like a golden retriever. 
It's a feature <laughs> critique. If you alt tab the game on Windows 10, it's going to turn into inverted neon purple puke. I've kind of learned how to navigate this stereoscopic hell, if only because I believe it's some kind of portal into the lean dimension. Jokes aside, if this happens to your game, it's fucked. Just close okay. and restart. Also, if you get a uh, frequent crashing with a pop-up that says like a uh, map view or show scene, there's a patch you can run to fix it. I'll link that in the description below. Finally, we have a sale on GOG for Age of Wonders 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I couldn't get the expansions for free because they're really expensive, uh. but uh, I did manage to secure the expansion for Age of Wonders 2. They will be available for very little money. I personally endorse every single this man is the sole reason that GOG has any income. <laughs> single one of them because they're great games, and I will review them when someone pays me a lot of money. Offer code FUGHUNTER goes in all fields. Enjoy. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos, except recently because I've realized I can milk VPN sponsors instead. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Nice. I don't know exactly how it is that uh, some of these companies tend to do it because some tend to have this thing where they forcefully have you reading through a script, right? When you have to do a sponsorship for them. But from what I've seen, uh, I think uh, the Internet Historian, Ordinary Things, uh, Seth, of course, and a multitude of other like genuinely good creators make these things extremely entertaining. And uh, hopefully those companies don't get back at them because why would they? They're literally getting their product sold. But this was hella funny. But <laughs> still, the nightmares of one man in one jar. <laughs> but guys, uh, thank you so much for checking out this video. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you already wrote through the comment section. Like, when are you going to react to this? I just did. But that said though, wish you all to have a wonderful day. Like the video if you liked it and see you guys in the next one. Bye.